Welcome everyone, Kelsey Odom here. We are with local artist Andrea Canham. She is a printmaker, painter, sort of a jack of all trades, wonderful teacher as well. We're gonna talk with her about her artwork in our recent exhibition of Ways to Wonder. Wanna explain a little bit about what your piece is? I made articulated character books, basically. And I've been drawing animals a lot and that's kind of, and also studying how to write a children's book. So one of the ways that you write a children's book is character driven or as a character. So you create a character. And so I was practicing creating a character and I had done a lot of drawings of different animals and they all were very fun. So I decided, and especially chickens and ravens. So my piece is chickens and ravens. So I decided I was gonna make them more 3D, my drawings. And I did, I made them little sculptures. They're kind of funny sculptures though, like this one, right? They're kind of funny because they're, they're really flat, but they do occupy space and they have a front and a back. This is one of my latest ones I'm still working on. I'm teaching at Palm Beach Public right now and I'm showing the kids how to create superheroes, right? Superhero. And so this is her secret identity here. And then on the back, is her superhero self. So I, the show for me was a culmination of all kinds of directions that I'd been going in for quite a few years and I'm so grateful for getting the deadline to do it. And it spurred me on to really explore using all the pieces of stuff that I had around and the pieces of stuff when I go to Resource Depot, I go crazy. <gasps> Look at this little piece. Oh, it's so beautiful. Oh, I've got to have it. Like I picked up these things and I still have not found where to use them. But I mean, who could throw that out? How beautiful is that? So I'm trying to think, you know, maybe we'll have a character that has a body that's like this. So I, I'm inspired by all the bits that I've been collecting and that I'm collecting from Resource Depot. So I made these little sculptures of all kinds of pieces. Like I had this box of frame parts and nobody wanted them. Not even Resource Depot. But they said, nobody wants these. We can't take those. Nobody wants them. But I could not throw them out. Look at how beautiful this is. I have a huge box that's been in my studio for about 20 years. So I finally figured out a way to use them. I used them to decorate my base and had my husband cut them and they look real cool. They're just so cool. This was also, I used this for the base. See, this is just a dowel. But this was something that when my kid was really young, he's 18 now, that somebody gave me a box of them and said, can you use these? And I'm like a sucker for such things. I'm gonna be inundated or buried by that. Because I think, oh, it's so beautiful. How can you let go of it? How can you give it up? <laughs> so I finally got to use those as well. And it's like really exciting, right? It's exciting. You're like, oh, problem solving and responding to something that's really beautiful. Like at Resource Depot, they have all of these things here. They have all of these things. They have books of material and fabric. And they're beautiful. I mean, and otherwise, they toss them out, right? Toss them out, but there's so much beauty. So you're responding to something that's there and you go, oh yeah, that would be great. And also you get to be a kid. Like that's how kids work, right? Oh, let's innovate it. And I'm using some of those books to innovate with my kids too, you know, showing them, oh, look, we can take this and use it for this. It's really exciting. <laughs> I don't know, I probably went on much longer than you had planned. <laughs> no, I think it's great. You're excited about the material and it's obviously changing a little bit the way you work. Um, a lot, yeah, I think a lot. Yeah, it's giving me a real more solid direction I think. Um, I did some long before this assignment I did some 
pieces um, ripping old work up, okay, and putting that together again with other bits and pieces making collages, but I got, I did 10 of them, and then I went, I don't know, that's not going anywhere. It's, they're pretty, some people like them, I posted a few, but I got a dead end. But I'm feeling that this particular articulated figure is a huge, mo uh, like a vein of exploration that will actually take me a long way. It's going to take me, you know, like I'm so excited by the different materials and my creatures. I'm looking to create an articulated figure. Here's a little one for the alligator head. Ah, oh, the boys love that. They're like, oh, that's so cool. And it reminded me of uh, Egypt. And so there's so many, uh, there's a richness of connection. I really like drawing. And this is a way to make it a significant element. Like it's just a drawing. If it's just a drawing, there's a little drawing. This one's sort of stuck. But now I'm putting it in this collage. I can make it 3D. Here's my little giraffe. Woo! He's so much fun. And I, since I'm learning about storytelling, I've made them books. A couple of them are book, like book people or book animals. So you can write in inside them and tell a story of your character, character driven. I think it's nice for other artists out there to know how artists get started. So how did you know you wanted to make art? That one was a harder question for me. And I thought about it last night a lot. And I thought, well, I don't know. It looks like destiny to me, okay? Whether, whether it was one thing I was good at. And, you know, I, people said to my mother, oh, she's talented. And my mother thought, well, that's the only thing she's talented at. So you get encouragement. And then I went to an art camp between uh, my 11th and 12th grade year. And before that, I was just mediocre. But something happened, like you all of a sudden grow up or realize something about who you are. When I came back, I was not mediocre anymore. And my teacher went, oh, I had an active art teacher. Oh, this is different, you know, something has changed. And then you go along, you make art, you participate, and now I can't imagine life without it. Like, it's like breathing. I, it's a no deal if I have to live without it. It's no deal. I have to do it. Wonder. Your show talks about wonder. It's how I connect with wonder, you know, through art. It, I think people don't realize that, you know, like, ugh, life is kind of tough a lot of the time. But something about art, beauty, it, it allows you to understand the wonder of life for me. Do you think that art can affect a community? Yes. I think that we have the wrong idea as artists, like, because we've gotten kind of moralistic, you know? Um, an enlivened person who can appreciate the wonder of life affects a community, one person at a time, because then they share their aliveness and their understanding. And it's really important to me now because I'm older. And this, I mentioned to Chelsea that this is a metaphor, you know, like I'm hoping old bits, that's me, <laughs> the old bits and bobs can be made into something new, can be transformed, right? That's what the show is about for me, the transformation of the old to the new, the learning. I, I like teaching because I'm not just teaching, I'm learning. I'm learning from the kids. They bring something and I bring something. And we're really, that's really been cut off from us. The, generation to generation. Anything else you want our audience to know? Uh, Resource Depot is a real, what is it? A catalyst for something grand, right? It's a catalyst. Oh, here's these things, this little idea. Oh yeah, I like to go there and get something. But there is so much behind it that could be a catalyst for a really amazing, you know, this waste to wonder. What a cool idea. Thank you for taking the time with us and, and making some beautiful artwork. And 
Thank you. I really appreciate it. I'm words of wisdom. I appreciate it. Everyone, go see the show. Yes.